All right, so let's get started then. Um, this is what we're going to do, right? So I'm, I'm going to keep it really simple. Um, if you look at like the, the nature of what this is built out of, it's built out of W sections, wide flanges. We're not going to get into that level of detail. Um, I am mostly focusing in this exercise on the organization of these points of connection. So that means where, where the, the truss points you know, meet the, the top cord, that's going to be sort of like we're, we're, we're just trying to, to map where the connections are going to be first. And then later on down the road, we'll look at how do you actually turn it into a physical thing? How do you create the surface of it? How do you, you know, subtract out what's in between? Because I would do probably a Boolean operation for it. So we'll look at that kind of stuff. Um, but to get us started, I think the first thing that we should look at is, is the structure of a list when we have these two different lines that are, that are different. Okay, and so I want to make this as smart as possible. And so I'm going to start from the bottom cord right here. I'm going to start from the, the or the bottom rail, I should say. Um, and then I'm going to offset a curve in the Z direction. And then I'm going to uh, reduce the size of it and then do my subdivisions. And my subdivisions will have different numbers, which is what's going to be part of our challenge. <clears throat> so let's go into Rhino then and create our first curve. And so in order to make it something that's sort of kind of believable, I'm going to go with a uh, you know, reasonable distance of, I guess, 100 feet. Um, and I'll just do that from the origin to make it easy. So line command. If you have your snap grid snap on, you can use that. But otherwise, I'm going to say 000. I'm going to type in 100 feet. And then for those of you who are less familiar with the Rhino side of this, um, if you don't type in the exact coordinate, you have to hold shift to make sure it goes straight down and then click again. I think most of you know that by now, though. <clears throat> and um, obviously, the way that I drew that means that my front view is going to be the elevation view of the bridge. Um, so this is where I'm going to uh, you know, operate at first. This is kind of like my going to be my primary view right now. Let's go back into Grasshopper and reference this curve in so that we can start um, doing the offset. So I'll just reference it in using the curve param. Very, very simple. So I'll set one curve, put it right there. And then um, our first job is to actually do the offset. Okay, so we know that this is a structural application. So with that, we have certain um, we have a, a certain expectations. So while we're operating in the x y plane, which is pretty typical, we have forces that are acting in the z direction downward, the negative z direction. So we can feel oh we can we can feel all right using a z axis in some applications. So um, because it will be a constant in this case. So. Um, with this, I'm going to offset it in the Z direction. So I'll go up to vector and vector, and I'm going to use unit Z. And I'll use the uh, curve utility offset. Actually, I don't think offset lets me do it with a vector. I think it needs a plane. It does. I'll just use move. Let's just use move. It makes a copy anyway. Um, so transform, Euclidean, and move. And so very simply put, um, the curve is the geometry that's going to be moved. Oops. The Z axis is the direction that it's going to move, and we just need to give it a slider that tells us how far it's going to go. So I'll do something like uh, 0 to 40. Plug that in. And I'll just start with a, a value of like 20, something like that for now. So I'm showing you this because um, there are sort of two different ways of doing this. Um, the, in fact, um, 
don't know if I want to show you this. Well, I'll show you. No. I don't want to show you this way, actually. I changed my mind. Keep the move, but disconnect it from the curve. Um, and let's just put it over here. And we're going to get there in a moment. So I'm going to do it a, a smarter way here for you guys first. I don't want to confuse you with, like, you know, proportions and, you know, subtractions and stuff like that. But um, basically what's going to have to happen is rather than rather than what you would think, right? You, you want to draw your bottom chord, you want to draw your top chord, and then you want to subdivide it the right number of points, and then you want to map them together. Um, but I have to figure out how short or how much shorter I need to make this line by scaling it down if I'm going to use offset to do it. So rather than trying to do the math on that or anything, you know, that's going to take 10 extra steps to figure it out mathematically, I figure a smarter way of doing it is to just take my subdivision of the bottom chord, break every subdivision. So if this is going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven breaks, right? Seven points of connection, or, or I should say eight points of connection, but seven spaces. Um, I can find a midpoint for every single one of those spaces and move the midpoint up, which gives me the option of, you know, just having a point at the top that I can map into a line. So um, I'm going to do it that way. So let's go to curve and uh, division. And we're going to do divide curve. We'll plug the curve in. And the number of segments, obviously, is going to be the spaces in between the points. So in this case, we're using, um, we could make it a slider. In fact, let's make it a slider, 0 to 10. But let's start at what I just identified as 7. We'll plug that into the number input. So we have seven subdivisions. It comes out with uh, eight points. It has uh, tangent vectors, and it has uh, parameters at a, uh, as a list. So um, tangent vectors, actually. Hang on. That's what it was. Okay, yeah. So that should be it. So the the um, the subdivision part now is actually I think it's the shatter tool. It's been a while since I've done this one, so bear with me. Um, so under curve and also under division, it's shatter. And I think I have to explain one of the the terms to you. So when this says um, when you hover over the T and it says parameters to split at. Um, think back to, to what we did with the domain. Oh, I erased it. Where we basically had a percentage of a particular domain and that defined where we put our geometry. So a parameter in this case is a proportional relationship of the max, minimum and maximum domain. So in other words, it's going to be a percentage value. And so that's what you're seeing here. It goes from 0 to 100 feet. And this one's measuring it in terms of distance. So you could reparametrize it and make it a percentage, or you can leave it as an actual distance. Does that make sense? All right. Anyway, so um, the parameters are going to be the distance values that get mapped in. And then the curve here is going to um, be the source curve. And so what you're going to find is that we wind up with 7 line-like curves. And then from that, we can find the midpoints by doing another subdivision, subdividing them by two, and then list item to identify that middle one, and we'll plug that in to move. So I will go to... Um, Actually, I could just copy the divide and the count right here again. And I'll plug this into C. And I'm going to change my number to 2. It's 
slide these out. And we'll have to list item now. So go to set list, list item. And we know that in a, in, in a division, a subdivision, where they're creating only three points, that the midpoint is going to be the index value of 1. So I'm going to go to param input, make this a value of 1. Plug this in, and I'll plug my points into the list. And here you see, when I select this, it's selecting the midpoint of every single one of those subdivisions. And then simply enough, when I move my move command back into place, I can take that list item, I'll plug it in, and there you have the points at the top of my truss. And so when I hide everything but my original subdivisions, there you can see that sort of triangular formation happening right there. So at this point, what questions do you have? Okay, I'm going to stop the video here. We'll move into actually mapping these things together and understanding the list difficulties that we're going to have.